In a previous video, we discussed the reasons why the Galactic Republic didn't have a military by the time of the Clone Wars, looking at the limits placed upon the Republic's army following the Rusin Reformations, roughly 1,000 years before the galaxy-wide conflict. But it wasn't just the Republic army that was severely limited following the Reformations, but the Republic navy as well. In fact, the reason why capital ships were uncommon in the period just prior to the Clone War in many ways predates the Rusin Reformations, as tactical and economic realities were the catalyst for a millennia-long move away from capital ships. In this video expose, I will explain why Star Destroyers, Battlecruisers, and Dreadnoughts were so rare before the Clone War, and also describe why the war was able to usher in a new age devoted to these large capital ships. First, it's necessary to define the sizes that we're talking about in relation to these warships. Using the classification developed through the Anaxis War College system during the Clone War, for the purposes of this video, Star Destroyers refer to warships 1,000 to 2,000 meters in length, Battlecruisers being 2,000 to 5,000 meters in length, and Dreadnoughts being 5,000 meters and above. So why were cruisers, warships only in the range of 400 to 600 meters, the backbone of the Republic Navy by the time of the Clone War, and not these larger capital ships? It must be understood that large capital ships were not always as limited in galactic warfare as they were in the period before the Clone War. Although their reliance ebbed and flowed with the necessities of warfare in galactic history, the use of large warships had always been common throughout the history of the Republic in the preceding centuries before the Clone War. In fact, the 5,000 year period between roughly 7,500 to 2,500 years before the Clone War was known as the Golden Age of Battleships. During this period, capital ships emerged as the mainstay of the Republic Navy and individual sector fleets, and the race to build larger and larger vessels began. Sparked by an improvement in the process, whereby a vessel's shields were not just stronger, but could regenerate quicker using a shield generator that was relatively much smaller than its predecessors, warship manufacturers began constructing vehicles that utilized shielding, armor, weaponry, and hyperdrive technology upon larger and larger warships. For example, this Golden Age of Battleships saw the Republic manufacture the 1200-meter Centurion-class battlecruiser, the 2011-meter Invincible-class Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser, and the massive Inexpugnable-class Tactical Command Ship, which had a diameter of 3100 meters. All of these vessels were larger than the Republic's Venators that emerged during the Clone War. But what happened to this reliance upon large capital ships by the Republic? And why were Star Destroyers, Battlecruisers, and Dreadnoughts so uncommon among the Republic fleet by the Clone War? Although, as we'll see, the Rusin Reformations would play a key role just as it did in the realm of the Republic Army, the Golden Age of Battleships came to an end roughly 2500 years before the rise of Palpatine's Galactic Empire, almost 1500 years before the Reformations. The reason why the galaxy saw a decline in the production of larger and larger capital ships in the period just before the Clone War was twofold, economics and tactics. In regards to the economic reasons, the period immediately preceding the Rusin Reformations saw the Republic undergo its most significant economic strains in its 25,000 year history. Having built some of the largest and most powerful ships in their history to combat the Sith and Mandalorians, the Republic's expenditures upon larger and larger warships could only continue for so long. Making matters worse, the Republic was in serious decline during this time, giving rise to a period known as the Republic Dark Age. The Galactic Republic was on the brink of total collapse, as thousands of the Republic's oldest corporations went bankrupt. In addition to these economic conditions that promptly ended the golden age of battleships, the era of large warships would also crumble under new tactics that were developed. During the new Sith War, which decimated the galaxy for a millennium from roughly 2000 to 1000 years before the Clone War, Republic tacticians once again concluded that fleets of smaller cruisers and gunships were superior to large warships. But the Rusin Reformations put forth in 1000 BBY by the Republic's Supreme Chancellor Tarsus Valorum following the Sith defeat in the new Sith Wars codified that which had been established for more than a millennium. It brought forth serious restrictions in the realm of warship production that would continue until the Clone War. The Rusin Reformations were an unprecedented experiment that had never been seen throughout Republic history. 
It was a voluntary dismantling of its own military power. Believing that the Sith were gone for good, and with the galaxy having experienced 1,000 years of brutal war, the Republic abolished the vast majority of its military, including its navy. Instead of a central Republic navy that was expected to keep the peace, a role that was carried out for 14,000 years, this role now fell to the individual planetary security forces. As a way in which to end the Republic's regional rivalries and promote sector fleets to take on a defensive role rather than an offensive one, the Reformations introduced substantial limits on the size and armament of warships. The size of warships was capped at 600 meters, meaning only cruisers could be produced, thereby effectively eliminating all Star Destroyers, Battle Cruisers, and Dreadnoughts from the galaxy. Further, if cruisers did exceed the 600 meter limit, restrictions were placed upon their hyperdrives and navi computers. This ensured that vehicles were confined only to local systems and didn't have free movement throughout the galaxy. To enforce these orders, Republic judicial inspectors were given new, wide-ranging powers of enforcement and were stationed within military depots and even within military vessels themselves. Therefore, although capital ships the size of Star Destroyers, Battle Cruisers, and Dreadnoughts were already in decline starting roughly 2500 years before the Clone War for economic and tactical reasons, the Rusin Reformations ushered in a new era that legally reduced the size of warships throughout the galaxy. Through the combination of these factors, warships larger than cruisers were uncommon by the time of the Clone War. However, we should recognize that the wealthiest industrial sectors and starship manufacturers within the galaxy did obtain exemptions for themselves within this climate of restrictions. Loopholes were found within the reformations by those who could afford to find them for those systems and planets that had direct representation within the Senate. These systems and planets were allowed to construct battleship level vehicles, but again, they were denied transgalactic capabilities and had to abide by strict armament limits. Another loophole that saw an exemption to the orders against large warships was an exemption granted to the galaxy's starship manufacturers. These powerful corporations were allowed to create prototype warships and experiment with models and classes. As the Clone War approached, this exemption allowed for the galaxy's starship manufacturers to continue technological innovation, whereby they could rapidly alter their existing ships to meet the demands of war. Therefore, while warships such as Star Destroyers, Battle Cruisers, and Dreadnoughts were rare by the time of the Clone War, these exemptions paved the way for the enormous vehicles that would emerge in the war itself, and then during the Imperial Era thereafter. So there we have it, the history of Star Destroyers, Battle Cruisers, and Dreadnoughts in the centuries leading up to the Clone War. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive hangouts and book discussions. If not for me... For Lieutenant Commander Angela Crin.